Hey, I'm Shane from Shane Smith Law. We're here today with John, one of our attorneys in the uh, traumatic brain injury group here at Shane Smith Law. And uh, this is sort of part two of some of the areas of the brain that get impacted in a collision and uh, other factors of a traumatic brain injury. So John, where were we uh, before we took a break there? So we had just landed on a very, very important part of the brain called the frontal lobe. Um, this part of the brain, Shane, it's it is a kind of what they call like the governing part of the brain. It controls important things like decision making, motivation, problem solving, planning, attention. And you know, the underlying factor of all those things is that that's what kind of makes someone a uh, contributing member of society. You know, right. those are all important characteristics that the brain controls that makes you a successful employee, happy in a relationship, a good spouse, partner, father, mother. And when that's not functioning at full speed, um, everyone notices. The person notices, um, employers notice, and it can have a real detrimental impact on the person who's injured. And when you say not functioning, this is, is this like an all or none, or is it their spectrum on it? And, and talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, so yeah, certainly depending on the severity of the accident, and just really the person who's injured. I mean, these things, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of unknowns and things we're just totally not 100% on in yeah. the medical community regarding brain injuries. So it can range from a slight reduction okay. um, to those abilities to them being completely wiped out. Um, you know, there's cases where the part of the brain that controls memory where people will remember nothing of their short-term memory. Um, and those are obviously the more severe accidents or incidents. Right. Uh, that makes me think of that, uh, there was a movie about that one year where the, the person had no short-term memory. After one day, everything started over kind of deal. Like, couldn't put anything into longer-term memory. It was 50 First Dates, I think, with Adam Sandler in it. <laughs> yeah. and, and obviously, that's a comedy movie. Um, but there is memory issues that come into play and where people can't remember short-term. They forget where their car keys are. They forget what they're in the car to go do. They forget they can't handle basic tasks at work. They can't remember anything at all. Or even some people who remember people they met years ago, but they can't remember anybody they met recently, right? That's correct. And you know, just one of the classic examples that you hear about this, because you know, when we're trying to explain this to jury members to say, hey, this is why we're asking for an extraordinary sum of money, because when you start thinking about the day to day, well, you know, how much money would you put on it if your spouse couldn't be trusted to turn the gas burner off yeah. when they were leaving the home? Or would you be able to trust someone who, you know, couldn't remember if they left the child in the back seat when they were going grocery oh, wow. shopping? These things are scary and terrifying. Um, and then you realize that, like, you know, if you're a spouse with someone with a brain injury, um, it, it, it almost becomes like you're the parent to two people at that point. Wow. It's not, you lose that support system, that structure, and you're now taking care of two people, you know, versus so, one. So you lose your partner and you pick up a child. That's right. And it becomes, and, and unfortunately it becomes a huge burden. We see that, and the st statistics show that it has a huge detrimental effect on people with brain injury and the success of their marriage. You know, they have higher divorce rates, things like that. Really? And I would imagine, let's say they do get divorced from that loving partner they had one time imagine it's hard to go find another spouse because you come with all these issues right absolutely you know and and that's a hard undertaking for any new person who's entered the <laughs> picture to undertake because it's a lot to the point where some people have to get you know um, assistance for their life or medical assistance to to be able to do daily functions and daily tasks well and somebody living alone who can't remember anything like you say leave the gas on or yeah. leave the burner on i mean that yeah is a, an easy way to get hurt or burn down your house or yeah. or perish and that's through no fault you know no, I want to say no fault of their own because they didn't mean for that to happen but it still happens and still doesn't fix the tragedy correct and and you just don't know and especially when you see issues with impulse control with the frontal lobe like someone who previously had good judgment well how do you put a price on not having good judgment for the rest of your life right it, it's a non-tangible thing but it really adds up and that's what we ask jurors to rise to the occasion to be like look like this person's life is different forever at this point and, and yeah and, and we've seen it like impulse control or emotion control or they don't have a filter anymore so they just say whatever comes to mind which you, you know sometimes you get crazy thoughts about people that are totally you know you wouldn't say them to their face but these people do say that you know they 
you know, the joke is somebody says, how do my shoes look? And they're like, they look terrible. You should never wear them again. You know, they say something like that and obviously that destroys societal interaction and I, I guess it's overall it just compounds, like you say, it's a bigger and bigger thing. That's right, the shoe example you gave, that, that filter, that soft filter that most people have there, unfortunately gets removed when people um, experience injury to the frontal, frontal lobe area. And we've talked about injury to the back of the head and we've talked to injury to the front of the head because those are the most common in a whiplash case when somebody gets rear-ended. Um, but what are the other big areas that most likely get hurt? Sure, absolutely. And it, and it varies depending on the type of injury. Sometimes we see T-bone where there's side swipe style accidents where someone hits the side of their head on, a gl on the glass versus like the airbag or the classic back of the seat. Um, then you start looking at other portions of the brain that can get injured, like the portion that controls actually hearing. Um, we have had, also, and also vision as well, we've had clients that have had their prescription glasses change overnight really? due okay. to an injury. Um, so it, it can immediately change your vision overnight after the accident occurs. Um, also, the portion of the brain back here that is not as often, but I do see sometimes with my brain injured clients that injure that portion of the brain, they lose the ability to find words in a sentence okay. um, and put sentences together as well as recalling certain words. So mm, okay. that means, imagine if overnight your, uh, your vocabulary got cut in half. Wow. Not great, um, not great at all. And it's really frustrating for a lot of people who were previously, I see it a lot with some of my high performing clients that are in you know, very important jobs or roles or managerial roles where when you can't find the right words, it is just so frustrating for someone because you're like, you knew how you used to be before the accident and now that's gone in the blink of an eye, a whole life of education and reading and learning and now you just can't access that part of the brain that has all those important words you're right. trying to and call. And it's gotta be terribly frustrating for the individual who remembers how they used to be and now they're not that person anymore. Right. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine how difficult that must be on that individual. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we talked one time about the, the imaging tests they can run. Um, how have you found, is that, do clients like to do that test? Do they not like to do it? Does it provide some results for them that make everything real? I mean, talk. let's talk about that. Absolutely, so there's quite a few tests that are out there that help us diagnose um, these injuries and also the severity of these injuries. Um, a lot of times when you go to the ER, they'll initially do a CT scan, which is kind of like the weaker scan, but gives a good um, first impression of what the injury is. Yep. It's mainly there to, to document the big injuries to the brain. And make sure you're not dying. Basically. Right, <laughs> exactly. Dying the next day or two. Yeah, and, and it's a good thing, but it also sometimes, um, we see a lot of our clients leave the ER thinking they dodged a bullet, okay. so to speak, because the, the ER is basically just there to, with some of their imaging, to make sure you're not dying. Right. Um, but it doesn't get into the nuances of a more microscopic brain injury that gives our clients these mild TBIs and all these weird symptoms. So you could leave the ER, they could say the CT scan is fine, go out thinking, okay, I, can't, I don't have a head injury, and start picking up all these symptoms and then think you're going crazy. That is the scary walk away, unfortunately. So it's our job to mm -hmm. then, if they weren't redirected to a neurologist, which they rarely are from the ER, um, you know, then we need to stress the importance to our client of, hey, you need to see a neurologist to get the proper testing done. Um, and that proper testing usually takes the form of a DTI, diffusion tensor imaging or neuropsych evaluation um, and some clinical correlation where a real professional who is looking for these more um, kind of nuanced injuries that are harder to pick up on in the ER room can really sit down with the client, see what's going on. Sometimes they'll interview uh, family, friends, because um, these are the real frontline eyewitnesses to the victim's brain injury. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, who knows you better than a spouse or a son or, you know, a teacher who sees you every day and then sees you before and after the accident. And they're like, yeah, something's definitely changed, it's off. Right. And I've seen clients before where once they get a test result, like the DTI or something else, they're like, wow, okay, now I feel like I was worried I was going crazy. I was worried I was making it all up. I was worried all this. And then you can see the scan and they're like, yeah, you suffered an injury right there. And then they talk about what it impacts. And like, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. 
and and that is just the benefit of the, the the time and the age that we live in and our medical advancements is you know 15 20 years ago someone would have felt just that they were crazy and that would have well, really been the end of it really um you know there's very limited imaging but th with this new imaging you know it's as clear as day where you can see where you know one part of the brain doesn't match the injured side and the neuroradiologist and the brain doctors can literally point to the part of the brain that doesn't match the other part and they can see where it's been damaged wow. and then they can sync it up with whatever that part of the brain was responsible for speech or vision and you know if those match the client's symptoms then it's it, it corroborates itself and it matches itself and that really gives our clients a ton of answers and, and a ton of relief at least knowing that they're not going crazy and that these symptoms and injuries are very real well, that's awesome, uh, or awesome information is what I'll say. Now, obviously, uh, scary that we even have to talk about it, but like you say, thank goodness we have the, the technology here now to do that, and I can only imagine it's going to continue to get better and better as more attention is put on these head injury cases. Absolutely, and you mentioned scary. There's, you know, there's some other scary long-term consequences and you know part of this you know uh, discussion we're having today is you know why do these cases with firms why are these sometimes these settlements in the tens of millions of dollars is it is it that these people are greedy and they need a lot of money is it plaintiff's lawyers it's not it's it's really that the injuries warrant these types of settlements um, one of the long-term uh, consequences is almost a fourfold increase in dementia. Oh wow! Um, and sometimes it can cause an early onset two to three years than it normally would. So when you say, "Hey, what price do I put on a four times risk for you know um, dementia and and okay. losing my mental faculties?" You can see why uh, jurors, when confronted that, place big value on on these types of claims. Um, well, I, I think. I mean, when I look at changing your spouse's personality I and mean, that's got to be totally i mean my wife if, if she said suddenly i'm a different person she'd say you took my whole life away from me you know or if my wife became a totally different person because of a head injury i would say you, you destroyed my life because i love my wife i married her i didn't marry somebody else you know so to me i understand why jurors get big numbers on these kind of cases because it totally it takes one life away and gives you a different one Right, absolutely. Um, and some of the other things, just in terms that we see for long-term consequences, I mean, it can range from seizure, seizures to um, infection, nerve damage, the whole host of things. They even think now that there's, you know, real hormonal changes too right. that people experience during a, during a, a brain injury. And these things are, we're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of medical research. Every year it seems like we're learning something newer about the consequences and newer about the science. Um, just, just a lot of things. So it's not just things like a seizure, there's a whole list of symptoms and things like that, which is one of the reasons I guess why uh, we've got our brain injury group is so the clients can talk to you guys and you get better at identifying and making sure they're getting the treatment when they say something offhand and you're like oh that's serious um all right is what else would you tell our listeners just to, you know this is one of those things where it's it's difficult when it happens to you because it can seem confusing at first um it's difficult to understand as an outsider because it's an invisible injury for the most okay, part yeah um it, it's very much visible when we do the correct diagnostic test and imaging and clinical correlation, but that's why we have to get to that point. Because before we get to that point, we just don't know because we, we like to see things on the outside and what the injuries are. You know, if you're, you break your arm, that's very easy to see right, what's wrong. Yeah. It's very hard when it's your brain and it's an invisible injury. Um, luckily with modern advancements, we can see you know, very clearly now that it's a very real injury that's not invisible and it has real lasting serious consequences and outcomes for our clients. Um, so really sometimes too when we handle these cases we like to get a what's called a life a certifi certified life care planner on board yeah. um, because the future damages are so immense and the cost are so you know hard to put a number on these certified life care planners will actually take that task under their belt and essentially itemize 
reasonable future medical expenses, cost of potential assist, medical assistance if they need it, um, as well as we, for our clients, sometimes get economists involved in what's called vocational rehabilitation experts where, you know, we look at the what sort of job they were doing that they can no longer do and yeah. say, well, you know, what can this person do now? Okay. What, what do they do for the rest of their life after this, you know, moderate to severe brain injury? Well, and I think about the thing with no filter. I mean, that alone could make it very difficult to employ you in anything where you have to deal with other people. I mean, I can only imagine even taking orders in a fast food restaurant. Absolutely. Customer service and sales <laughs> is probably right off the table if, you know, if you snap at every person that comes by due to your brain injury. A, a life care planner, what, what does that mean? If you had to reword that to somebody, what, what would that, how would you simplify what that person does? It is a person who's, who literally specializes in putting a value on some of the injuries and future injuries that you're going to be ne needing to be compensated for. And, and so that person, but they've got the training that they know what your injury is, they know what's likely to happen in the future versus if I just talk to you with the brain injury, you may not know or I wouldn't have known dementia is a huge issue. You, you know, but that's what they're trained to do is to say, yeah, but this is this increases, the chances of this is higher, this is higher, or yeah, it's almost certain this is gonna happen in 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and that's, some, that's the real key walk away for people not familiar with the legal system is that a legal case can't really go on for 50 years, the rest of a person's life. That's not how it works. We usually have a finite time where we've got to take care of the case. Um, and so, well, how do, we, how do we account for all those future expenses mm -hmm. that you know, the victim is going to have to deal with for the rest of their life? We do it through life care planners gotcha. a lot of the times who through data and studies and you know prior outcomes of other people with similar injuries can then predict out to a certain degree of medical certainty what the injuries and medical expenses are going to be within reason and is that same person take into consideration that things cost differently you know go back 10 years ago things were one price now they're different price is that the person who handles all that or is that somebody else Absolutely. So, you know, it, the cost, the rising cost of medical expenses, which we're all very familiar with, um, does get factored in typically with these in that, you know, what uh, an injection or some form of therapy today is definitely not going to be what it costs, you know, 20 years from now. Gotcha. All right. I mean, a lot of great information. Um, anything else about the long term effects of injuries and things like that you would want to talk about today, John? I, I think we've covered just about everything, Shane. I, I certainly appreciate your time today. No, thanks. And for all our listeners, uh, hit like and subscribe to, to catch next week's episode as well. We're going to continue talking about traumatic brain injuries and the impact on uh, our clients, but also other individuals as well. So it's not just legal stuff here um, on the TBI podcast. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm Shane from Shane Smith Law. In pain, so I call Shane. 980 In pain, call Shane.